Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to this, the final episode of Fundy Fun Spot. So if you're finding us for the first time, welcome aboard. Thank you for coming along. Uh, if you're not aware, Fundy Fun Spot's a mini series that we put together to celebrate 500 subscribers, hence the name Fundy, Five Fundy. It's all a bit weird because the thousand subscriber episode's just gone out. Uh, so Fundy Fun Spot is a British seaside theme park, very much plagiarising Fantasy Island in In God Males. It's a low budget, but very much loved and looked after park and of course you would have watched all of the episodes coming up to this point so i won't dwell on that so we're going to do a park tour for the final episode um so i'm in tejid cam look hello tejid cam uh so let's do a tour here we are at the uh entrance so of course behind us we've got all of the uh the main road and everything that we put together uh this i'm going to be showing you later on i'm so excited to show you that i filmed that bit earlier on <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i spent 10 minutes just gawping at the work it's amazing uh okay so funny fun spot then it's very much uh this low budget park um it's put in loads of roller coasters that are pretty much cookie cutters from the stuff that you find off the shelf from from everywhere inside the pyramid is this really high themed area it's really well looked after uh, and outside is basically just rides in a car park so this is the entrance plaza area. Well, I can't say entrance plaza because it doesn't have an entrance plaza. It breaks all of the conventional rules of having entrances and stuff like that. Uh, so this is just like the main road entrance, if you like. So that's why we've got all of the, the fountains and stuff. So you can buy your tickets from over in the ticket booth area here. Um, or you can go and grab yourself an ice cream from our little ice cream shop that we've got going on here. And then, of course, you're met with the first ride that absolutely dominates dominates the skyline uh so yeah it's it's awesome um so we've just got this this idea that sundown which is this this ride uh is in amongst this kind of like volcano and that kind of borrows the inspiration from inside the the dome inside the pyramid this with the where the volcano is in the middle so the idea was is i just wanted something to obscure the entire park that's sitting on the background because otherwise it was just this really boring flat piece of land that you could see all the way through and there was no intrigue or adventure so that's what we were going for here um, and then we can come this way and you've got the the scissor on the left hand side uh, with just a few bits of like stuff thrown around you know like typical cheap theming scenery that you would find in one of these places and then you walk this way and you have all of your games units that you would expect to find in a place like this uh, all kitted out and beautified by all of the lights and the the flashing things and the noises and the sounds and the people shouting come play these games come play these games uh, but in the background of course you've got the foreboding first roller coaster that we're going to head towards uh time twister so we come this way we walk over the <laughs> over the picnic bench uh, and we've just got some food outlets along this side just to sort of bring the area to life with a little bit of splash of color and again it's a bit of a sight obscuring thing like you don't want to see what's really behind it because there's a, a mac mega standing behind this shop that you can't see or well, you can kind of see it poking through here uh, so this is very much inspired by one of the shops at cedar point i think this was i just loved the design i loved the colors i just wanted to, to bring that kind of feel into this it feels like this very british park would have this seaside kind of color to it so that's the whole purpose of this very wood very panelly very pink because we love our pink on our on our seasides and then we come through this way and we've got our pathion or python whatever they're called three uh on on this side everything in this park is on the outside at least very generically themed with the exception of a couple of rides where they've made a little bit of effort that's the entire purpose of it so we've got a ferris wheel that's on here uh on the on the left hand side no this is the right hand side uh, there's our Mac Mega Mega Rail. We'll go on that in a little bit. Here's where you can buy tickets. It says parking tickets, but you just have to believe that these are like just pay points that you can just buy tickets or <laughs> self serve machines. And then we come through this way to just some more game stalls and then uh, this really weird out of place Western shop. And that's the that's the beauty of fantasy island in real life it is just a hodgepodge mismatch of all sorts of themes and everything because it's just supposed to be a place of adventure and a place of fun so it's kind of what they're going for and then we come over here to time twister so it's a uh, intimate impulse coaster it's supposed to be this way it's just your typical generic off the shelf you can see them at cedar point and other uh, other parks as well and it's just 
pride of place in this park. It just fits in real, real nicely. It's supposed to be themed in the 90s. It's very generically themed. It's just got the whole red and yellow color scheme to it and the actual station itself is just very simple you've just got all 16 rows that are in here the queue is just your typical metal fence that you would use but from above you can see that this is a concrete pad so they've made an effort with the brickwork on the ground here there's the outline of the old car park just in front of us here and then this is all sitting on a concrete pad that they've purposely dug out to put this ride in and that's that's where it's that's where it's sitting so the station of course as you would expect is all kitted out with everything that you need and we also took the design decision to not recolor the trains uh, it was almost like they had bought this new version of the trains second hand from another park that was getting rid of one and they, they because the trains are better you know think along the lines of the old uh, for coma stuff that kind of thing so that's why we didn't recolor the trains and it actually it's just it's a perfect mix match so let's go on a ride for this i get uh, requests for rides that are track based rather than train based so that's what I've done for all of the POVs with exception of the log flume in this episode they're all going to be track based so let's go for a ride All right, I mean, not too bad for a pretty standard ride, right? And now that the town is in place, that POV just completely changes all of its personality and it just fits in so perfectly. I love it. So we're going to come out this way then and we're going to go, of course, fire a games unit. There's no on-road photos for any of the rides, by the way, so there's no ride photo shops, but we do focus on monetizing as much of the area as we possibly can by throwing down as many games machines or game stalls as you can phys physically fit into an entire space so here's just a reminder of that really weird out of place western building just what is it even doing there but that's why that's the beauty of it they've just put it there because it was supposed to be good we're gonna head round to mega rail to do a pov on that one and of course we've got the ferris wheel that's there but i'm just gonna take you around this way so you can see the other stuff that's that's in here and we'll do a loop We'll do a loop around. So we then have a couple of spinny spewy rides. These are really, really common in our fairground style attractions here in the UK. And it's probably the same elsewhere in the world, right? But I just wanted to borrow this idea of the fairground stuff to make these look really temporary. Now, those that have watched the series will already know that we struggle with the pads and how good <laughs> the stuff is in Planet Coaster, right? So the pads that the rides sit on and just the, the really good design of the rides because they're supposed to be permanent installations. So I've tried to make these look as temporary as possible and that's why we've got all of this this kind of stuff around here. And if we just walk around this way, then of course they've all got ticket booths as well. So uh, they're, all, they're all in place just to make this just have a little bit more believability. And then here we've got ourselves this awesome little car ride. It's nothing particularly special. It's just a track ride that's been plank plonked on top of a car park and they've just thrown some really cheap, nasty scenery at it. But it's starting to introduce you to the world of the road theme that's coming up because we've got the go-karts on the, on the left-hand side down here. So this is literally just cones and barriers and a few road signs that have been placed around. I mean, there's literally no effort or care or anything, but it actually looks quite all right. You know, corrugated roof building and simple color scheme. And it actually looks all right from peak level. So it's just not very inspiring if, if you were looking for massive, massive theme park. Uh, so I then also wanted to put in a chairlift. And so this is the chairlift here. We took the design decision to not give it a building because Fundy Fun Spot were just too lazy to do it. So they've kept it completely open and that's what we're <laughs> that's what you end up with. But it's quite nice. And then you've also got all of the, these decoration bits around here. So you've got loads of pads that have got 
uh, all of these bins and benches and stuff in it. And Fantasy Island used this to fill space where rides previously were. So the idea is that Fantasy Island would probably switch its configuration and placement of rides pretty much every year. So you go every year and the rides are in a different place because they, they swap them around for many various reasons. But what they do is they then create like these little oasises, oasises of bins and benches and things for you to just to chill out so this is what we're representing here you'll find this quite a lot where we're where we're filling some space uh, in the park uh, by the way in case you are wondering none of the rides are running because it really affects the frame rate, frame rate we've got literally one of every ride in the park and it really does drag the frame rate down so i've turned them all off and emptied the park so that we've just got some pretty decent uh, responsiveness on our on our camera so here's another area then for bins and benches and then we have just got our tourbillon that's sitting in the background here so again this is just like another plonked down ride it's meant to be just it's just meant to be there it's very simple fencing no theme at all and a very bored looking ticket ticket guy <laughs> who's like please somebody buy a ticket and then over this way, this would actually be one of the most popular things in the park is the go-karts. Go-karts are really popular here when you put them into a, a park of this nature. So I wanted a nice and simple go-kart track, cheaply cheap to install. Again, it's just a load of road signs and tyres that are thrown down. Although I made the joke last time that you could try buying four tyres for your car. That's not cheap. Uh, and just loads of like all of the roadwork stuff and cones and, and things so i'll do a an overhead tour at the at the end of this but this is the station building that i wanted to, all of the queue to be under cover nice and simple queue and again it's that principle of the padding and then you've just got the station in here nice and simple station there's no frills to it but it's just got all of the race theme to it so it's got all of the usual black and white stuff and then the red just to incorporate this this idea of of racing and then we're going to come back down, uh, which way did we go? This way. So we're going to go past the ticket booths, and then we've just got our paratrooper, parasailor, whatever they call them, uh, just in the side here. And then we've got the entrance to the car ride on the right-hand side. And then we also have a forge in front of you. So this is just another one of those big rides that you would uh, that you would see. Again, really simply themed, actually. So the queue... Oh, no, that's the... Uh, the <laughs> I don't even know my own park. Uh, so the drop tower that you've got here, that's the queue for the drop tower. Again, it's just plonked on top of a car park. And if you have a look from the, the top, you've got this tarmac and it, it changes colour and it's almost as if they've dug it up and replaced it and they've repaired it and they've done stuff and you've got loads of patches everywhere. And then you've just got the faint lines that still exist from the previous car park. So it's pretty obvious that it's still a car park. Uh, and then we're going to come this way. Again, it's another seating area just to fill some space. So we're going to walk over them. <laughs> and then we come into the plaza area for Mega Rail. So it was almost like they would have made a little bit of an effort with this area because this is the crowning joy of the whole park. So uh, all of the fountains and everything that are drawn in from the front of the entrance that we you know were by the road so that this now all makes sense in this area and then we come to the queue line really simple simple setup queue line uh, just quite literally cattle pen because it would need a cattle pen and then we're just going to go up this way up this way and hope that we don't get stuck there we go up this way up this way and into a very very bland very like simple station in fact the color scheme for the inside of the station doesn't really make sense to the color scheme of the ride and of course it's pink and blue because it's the channel colors right of course it is uh, <laughs> so again another station that's all completely kitted out this one's got custom flooring to it because i just wanted to hide some misdemeanors for some things that i was doing with the shop uh, underneath but let's go for a ride
There you go. So it's a Mac Mega that inverts and it was actually the winner of a competition or say competition a vote that we did on the channel to find out what the crowning glory of the entire park was going to be and this was by far the way well mac was by far the, the winner and then it was a bit of a toss-up between whether you wanted a launch or a mega so we kind of did the two we did a mega with some inver inversions because they can right they can invert they just tend not to okay so we're going to head over to uh, our next coaster again this is just another area that's been uh, modified and monetized and gamified uh, I didn't show you this by the way so we've got toilets underneath here uh, because I didn't realize at the time of building that we needed toilets it's so close because everything was supposed to be in the dome and then you can walk down this way which this is the exit path for mega rail this is the back of that pink stand that we were just at and then you've just got a gift shop that's in here. So, of course, all the gift shops that I do are all kitted out inside in some capacity. This one's not kept nice and simple in design. It's really clean lines, just pink and blue and white with a dark ceiling. And then it just lights up at, lights up at night. And then you've just got loads of neon signs and everything. So it's supposed to be like their new ride. It's supposed to be a bit shiny, but also really, really, really simple and really effective. So we're going to come this way. Uh, the beauty of Mega Rail, by the way, is that it's placed all above park level, so so path level, so that everything is above you and you can just walk through. Lots of custom supporting going on with this one. Uh, I needed to put some supports in just to make it work because you do have paths underneath it and the pathing system gets rid of supports and everything. So I just wanted to... to make this mess in here i wanted this mess of supports to to come along in the, in this side so we're going to come this way and again you've got a seating area that's round by one of the turnarounds and then of course you don't want to waste any kind of space so there's a games unit right in the middle looks a bit foreboding and a bit daunting uh, the train coming happy days yay uh, and i love this inversion here by the way and just how it sort of curves around this way after the the the, the inversion that you've got here and all of the the airtime hills it turns into a bit of a, a swoopy twisty turny one so it's like two a coaster of two halves really so we've got ourselves this unit here that's just a, a, a diagonal diamond thing you know it's just put in just to be good and then you've got breakdance that's sitting in the background over there and then you've got fishermen's uh, what they called game stalls. So these came off the workshop and it's fishermen that, that did these and they just fit in to the park so well. But again, just this idea of monetize as much of the area as you possibly can because you're not charging for entrance, you're charging per ride. So you want to be able to try and make money from the people that aren't actually riding rides, right? Sort of makes sense. And then you've just got the cosmic cow unit over here and then we've got this horrible Morrison premier ride i don't know what you what manufacturer you want to call it it's like a bit of a hybrid of, of all of them really isn't it i think it's morrison um but it's like a sky loop variant if you like and again it's just off the shelf it's nothing special it does what it needs to do it's thrilling the park put it in because it was cheap and the guests love it and it's not very good on throughput so it has a great queue and it looks like it's more popular than it really is so the idea of this though is that they they would have made a bit of an effort with this area they wanted to have a bit of a jungle theme but they didn't want to spend too much money on it because they knew that it was just a bit of a rubbishy coaster so they just put loads of jungly type stuff down they gave it a jungly type canopy over the station and then inside it's just like wood and stuff but it's not actually that special um, and it's a bit of a, again, it's a mismatch, and that's the idea of this, is it's supposed to be a bit of a mismatch. This is the queue, it's really boring, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible queue, uh, wouldn't want to be in this queue, personally, because the throughput on this ride is just awful. But, with that said, we don't have to queue, but let's go for a ride.
do you know what? Best part of this ride? The view of Mega Rail as you leave it. <laughs> so this just looks amazing. Like I love I love this view of Mega Rail because it's just a mess of steel. And this is exactly what I wanted to go for. This idea that you could get lost in this maze of steel as you're walking towards the pyramid. But of course, because this is also double acting as an entrance to the park, uh, which is just down here. So the city and the town lie, lay just behind it. So of course, you're going to have some kind of ticket booze and you want some kind of intrigue to the park and what better way to welcome your guests to your park than to have a bloody great coaster that's sat in front of you so this is exactly what we've got and it's just so smooth and it's just so graceful it's just they did a really you know what frontier did a really good job with the max they really did so we're heading over this way we're going to go on the log flume next weirdly um there's a bit of a story with the log flume so again this is another fet space filler ride um so this is the Enterprise, and then we're going to walk this way. I'm going to do a tour of the outside of the dome uh, before we go in it, by the way, so uh, don't worry if you're seeing things in the background. These I custom built. Uh, I just wanted to have trampolines to fill a space. They're mostly made out of beams um, and a few art shapes and everything just to make it look like trampolines. They're the best I could do with the short time that I had but actually do you know what they turned out all right I quite like I quite like how they turned out and lots of Harris fencing around it to make it look like it is a permanent a, a temporary thing you've just got a small queue and these would be cleared away and something else would go in its place probably bins and benches so then you've got more game stalls in this area um imagine there would be a ride here at some point there would have been like a smaller ride kids ride or something that they've removed and they just put this in instead so then we're going to come this way, you, you you can see the Fisherman Games units on the back here. That's again just filling space because uh, Mega Rail sort of cuts that part of the park off. You can't put rides and stuff in there because behind it you've got this, the, the city and the road and everything. Um, so this is just like to, to fill a bit of space. And then this Monte Leone here was a bit of a challenge I set myself. How good can you build without using theme makers toolkit because i wanted to show even console players that yeah do you know what you can still do stuff so this build here contains other than the the fencing around here which is not part of the build doesn't contain any theme makers toolkit item at all and actually it turned out really really nicely in the back it's dark and it's got loads of light effects and, and the moving heads and everything so at night this is a really nice ride to go on so uh, yeah i love it love it love it love it and then we've just got our um spell round from <laughs> ray gate lake uh it's not called spell round here though but our witches witchy go round uh is is all on here of course it's just they're, they're all just random rides thrown thrown into into a place right uh, and then you've got the corralis that's sitting here as well but now we're starting to enter an area that's got a bit of a theme this is an area that they would have made a little bit of an effort with because it's quite close to the entrance of the dome when you want to sort of transition between heavily themed and car park so this is the this is the idea this is a bit more of a western western type theme and the log flume they've made an effort with they they like to keep this log flume going because it's the it was at one point the crowning glory of the park so it's only got one drop and it just winds through this western desert desert theme but they've just put all of this gravel down and gravel is not cheap uh, so they put this gravel down and you wind through a desert with lots of rocks and lots of stuff here you know like the uh, cactuses and western clutter and whatever so it's just like it's the, it's the first thing they do really to try and tell a story and you come around this way and the entrance is this way and then you come up through the queue uh, so we're going to go should we go on the queue? let's go on to the queue there we go uh, and then from the queue you go over the top of the over the top of the the drop um kind of inspired by raygate lake but not as intense it's not as good as an effect of a splashdown as raygate lakes is uh but still relatively still relatively good right and then you come around this way take a look down the the whole western area down here and then come down the, whoop, badly down the stairs like so and down the stairs here like so and then you come into a very western themed station so again this has had a bit of an effort made to it they've thrown some theming and stuff around just to make it look all right um 
I quite like how this has turned out. Actually, I like how the, I like the gravel. My favourite bit of this is the gravel because it's all concrete bedded. It's all got a, an actual concrete base. I dug out all of the channels, laid down the concrete so it's an actual pad of concrete and then put the gravel on top and the result was just awesome. So hopefully you'll be able to see that in the POV. So I reckon we get on this boat and we go for a ride. There we go. That's just a little bit of a better view of the ride area and all of the detailing that I've done inside it. And I don't know if you can just see it in the background there, but there's loads of stuff, you know, like the electric boxes and whatever that's at the bottom of the lift hill. So all of that exists in game. And of course, you get a really good view of Mega Rail from here as well. And this is what I mean by all, the, all of the gravel. Hydro's gravel is just so versatile. You can do so much with it and make some really, really good stuff. So this is just supposed to represent sand and it's perfect does it perfectly then of course there's the water uh, pull for the for the drop I'm gonna come down this way down the stairs really cheap nasty theming and really imaginative name for a log flume love it <laughs> So, and then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go on bolt so story of bolt is it's a coaster I actually made for Colwell Wonderland so if you've seen the tour video of that you will have seen this coaster before. I've just reskinned the station, but essentially everything else is the same. The way that the pathing goes and all of that, because this this is just an off-the-shelf coaster that you'd go and buy from Schwarzkopf. It's just the one loop, uh, but this is a permanent installation. This wouldn't be one of their traveling versions, so they would have physically designed this as an off-the-shelf. So think along the lines of the SLC equivalent from Schwarzkopf. Imagine. Imagine the hell. <laughs> so this is the station then. This is another one of those. It uh, doesn't contain any TMTK for the main part of the build. I just did some touching up with things like electric cabling and electric cabinets and back of house stuff just to clutter it out. But the actual main build, so all of the pillars and, and the railings and everything, all in-game stuff. So that was where the inspiration actually came for the Monte Leone to say, what can you build without actually doing any theme makers toolkit or anything dodgy with the game uh, so Q line really 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 simple Q line it's just a nice big cattle pen that you can just go backwards and forwards blaring pumping trance music in the background um, but awesome view of the loop and the entire layout and this thing actually is a proper crowd muncher it's only got short trains but it's really efficient 
it's, it doesn't look like it when you look at this, but it's really efficient and really well timed. So as the autosave kicks in, which is now going to be another 17 minutes, uh, I think we should go for a ride. In case you were wondering, I timed that autosave. 21 minutes. Thanks, Frontier. Reggae <laughs> Lake is so much worse. Uh, welcome to the Curse of Big Parks. So, we're heading over this area now, uh, over to this area, and this is the last area that we actually developed. So, this was like the finish up of, of all of the uh, of the rides and everything that's going into the park and then we started to build the maintenance areas and everything that we've got and this was also the episode that I went the entire episode not realizing that my overpower was facing the wrong way <laughs> not anymore it's it's in the right place now uh so yeah the, so you've got the overpower that's just supposed to be it's supposed to be hiding this bland wall that you've got here but it's doing a really bad job of it and that's the idea uh, and then we've got a roundup ride that's very much a temporary solution here this would have been vincent benson's last year and then you've got the pirate ship uh, that's kind of like borrowing from the borrowing from the internal theme that you've got inside the pyramid so it's like bringing the pyramid outside in here and then we have ourselves our wooden coaster so our wooden coaster history is that this would have been the first thing that Fundy Fun Spot would have installed outside of the pyramid and it's been here for quite some time it's well loved it's like a family favorite it's a friendly favorite it's the equivalent of Grand National at Blackpool Pleasure Beach or the Big Dipper at Blackpool Pleasure Beach you know it's not quite Margate um, Scenic Railway. It's not quite that historic, but it's it's loved enough to be preserved. And that's why the station is still the same station that would have been there. So the inside of the pyramid would have been kitted out, decked out, refitted, ripped out and started again many, 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 many times. But this roller coaster is the one consistent thing that's always been here. So the station is very much that Americana kind of station borrowing very much from the design themes of the day when the coaster would have been installed and they've just preserved the station because they just don't have the heart to rip it out and start again so we're going to go on that uh, in a moment no, do you know what let's do let's go on that now we've, we've just been talking about it right so it makes sense um we'll do the rest of the tour uh, in, in a second so this is the inside of the station then so it's it's been modernized over the years it's had all of its electrics and everything updated and it's got these massive lampshades and, and everything that's that's in the in the station and it's just yeah lots of beams lots of corrugated roofing and, and and all of that stuff so trains here let's go for a ride
pretty decent forward and coaster. It's just simple. It's a nice design. Um, it's nice and friendly. I love it. It just came out so well. So we now come to the pun portion of this episode where we are going to see all of the tortured puns that I've managed to put into <laughs> Fundy Fun Spot. So we've got our grand carousel that's in front of us here and we've just got uh, ribs over here which is just like a, a, a food unit that was put down. It's somewhere that would be open all year round. It's open to the public whenever, th even throughout the winter when other rides are working. So that's what I wanted to go for here. Um, but in the background is the first of our tortured puns. Uh, <laughs> Guacquid. It's guacamole. It's a place that sells burritos. <laughs> I'm not sorry for any of these puns, by the way, but us Brits, we love a good seaside based pun. So, yeah. Uh, and we're going to see them all in its whole glory now. Uh, so we come the other side out to the to the main road. Uh, we have Sunburn Games on the other side. And that's something I'm going to show you shortly because that's somebody else's work that I need to show off. Uh, or they need to show off, should I say. Um, and then we've just got here. Let's get physical. It's a drink shop. Doesn't sell anything drinky. <laughs> and then we've got the arcade uh, in here. So the idea of this would be the arcade was very modern, um, it's, but it's using very modern retro kind of stuff. Uh, it's got bowling and it's got pool and it's got slots and games. As you can see on the on the building, you could read that probably for yourself. <laughs> but inside, fully kitted out as, a, as an arcade. Now, unfortunately, what I'm going to show you later on just makes all this make look rubbish. But... Um, this was this was good at the time. The carpet is uh, billboards that have been placed down, and then I just found an image off Google uh, for a typical carpet for an arcade. So like, and this is the typical design style that, that you get. So inside here, you've got all of the arcade games and everything just laid out in a big in a big room. Bit of a modern feel to it because you've got all the exposed brick and then the ceiling up here with a black ceiling with colours all along it uh, there's a bar for food so you can come over i don't think i'm going to struggle with hedged cam here no i'm not okay cool uh, so there's a bar over here then uh, that you can come and grab food and grab some drinks and, and everything i don't know why a bar would an arcade would have a bar but it does uh, and then we're going to come this way and you've just got some more slots and games and everything that's that's coming along along here some awesome videos that i've managed to get off of um, a website called vidEasy. so it's just like arcade style game videos and then you've got bowling that's in that little alleyway down here and there is a back of house bit down here where you'd go down and the the, the guys would rescue the pins and whatever so this is just about wide enough for a person to to fit down uh, but it's not obvious enough that you could go that you could go down there right so uh, that's what that is and then from here this is the look of the arcade the pool tables i made using theme makers toolkit items this is i think exclusively theme makers toolkit it's all beams and uh, squares and these are light bulbs the light bulb that you find on the theme makers toolkit so i just colored them to make it look like pool balls i didn't put them on the actual pool table because these are too big for the pool table but shh don't tell anyone it's our little secret so we're going to come out of uh, this way and we head on to the main street. So the main street is, oh, this is so plagiarized from Ingold Melds and Skegness. It's just frightening. It's frightening. Uh, but we've got our games unit that's just in the front here. The idea is, again, monetize as much of the area as you humanly possibly can. So that's what they've done here. It's just like a, a unit that will be closed in the winter, but lots of games and everything on the inside and packed full with as many stuff as you can, as much stuff as you can. The idea is to catch people to play games that aren't going to the arcade. So it's supposed to be like a, a bit of a support for that. Then you have this really loud uh, chips. So this is like a, a, a small restaurant. It's got a bit of a seating area in the front here. Loads of tat on the walls. Just like a, a, a really nasty takeaway that you would just find. Really cheaply put together, but you know, it's just sell stuff. It's only open for the summer. It's all that matters. Uh, and then we come this way and we have, is this Sandy's? Yeah, this is Sandy's. Sandy's is a little bit more thought out. It's a little bit more loved, a little bit more cared for. Um, and it's got a bit of design flair to it. So you've got all of the menus and stuff 
above. Uh, it's actually modelled on the likes of Burger King and McDonald's and, and the fast food restaurants that you've got in here. So it's had a bit of money spent on it. Uh, bit of a seating area. Lots, again, tat and everything on, on the walls. But uh, nothing major because you've got this this awesome seating area out the front. Where is it? There it is. So you've got this awesome seating area out the front. So this is pretty much where you'd go and eat your food beside a main road. Why would you not? Uh, <laughs> and then I also kitted out. Whoops. Oh, no. Are we stuck? That was fatal. What I was trying to say there was I kitted out the kitchen. Um, now, this is the reason I don't do kitchens normally. <laughs> so, there's the kitchen. It's got all of the stuff. I just did it really nice and simply. There's nothing really uh, particularly special in, in here. It's just, it's just a kitchen. And then we come further on down... Uh, down the road here and then we come to shaky shane's so this is a a milkshake shop that would also sell things like cookies and sweets and other soft drinks and probably ice cream as well um it would be in there and uh sundays and that kind of stuff so i wanted this to be a bit more sophisticated a bit more colorful and the idea behind this was uh, this whole frontage would be place in place when uh, sorry, this whole frontage would be units that would be rented out on a yearly basis and the, these guys have actually rented out two units, knocked them through and they've now got a seating area on one side and a street side bar type serving area on the other and then just pull shutters shutters down when they're, when they're closed and be done with it. So that's that's what I wanted to go for uh, in, this, in this area. Quite like actually how it turned out. Then we have the entrance to Fundy Fun Spot. Then we have Brutiful Coffee. It's a modern coffee house. Um that's just been tagged onto the side of, of the whole uh, of the whole Fundy Fun Spot dome, pyramid, whatever you want to call it. And then inside is just kitted out as uh, just this very modern, very clean looking coffee house. And uh, behind here, we've got everything you'd expect, including a custom coffee machine, which when I look back, didn't actually turn out too badly after all. I just threw it together just quickly because I needed a coffee machine and there wasn't one on the on the workshop so that's what I did and then we carry on walking around this way we've got the entrance to pontoons which we're going to uh go in now so this is our um almost like Weatherspoons inspired bar very themed around the pirate side because it's attached to the pirate area but at night I'll show you this at night as well um this would all be cleared this becomes a dance floor you've got lots of disco lights and everything going on in here this is the pyramid through this side and then you've got uh, the bar area here. Of course, the bar area is completely kitted out with all the amenities that you'd expect to find in a bar. And then as you walk through, it starts to turn into a bit of a, an adventure style theme. And that's because the inside of the dome is, or the pyramid is, is like that. So we're going to come out this way because we need to show you the sweet shop. Whoops, with some really... This is why I should have stayed in Tejikam. Uh, the sweet shop and Sarni's. So Sarni's is just really simple. Just this horrid grey building that they pulled together just to fill a space. But the sweet shop is a very modern style sweet shop. Look at all of the colours, all of the rainbows, very modern design. I actually, I love, I love how this, how this turned out. Like, I, I want to use this style again in, in the next park build. Um, I want to like make this the main style of the next park so i think i'm going to do do this again um and then we come this way we go past uh hot dogs and smoothies so this is just a, a grab and go unit that's on the outside and then we come to what i think would actually probably i would describe as the crowning glory of uh the puns so poultry geist and game of cones you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so, Poultry Guys is just simple inside. I'll show you that when we get into the dome. But Game of Cones, I think, is is probably my favourite restaurant setup that I've uh, that I've actually done because it's all kitted out on the inside. And inside here, you've got all of your separating things, and you've got scoops of ice cream, and you've just got freezers and, and entire backstage areas. Just got all of like the order. The sign looks good. Lots of theme makers talk it stuff going on in here. And then uh, games units and stuff. The partitions that are just beams. And uh, the custom benches that are actually usable. I walk through all of that, how it's built uh, in the actual uh, in the actual episode. So, 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 so. This is Fundy Fun Spot from the 
guy before we go into the pyramid and i'm just going to do a real quick recce down this way because we need to do this reveal down here um so this is the this is fundy fun spot this is very much about throwing as many rides as you possibly can into a small amount of space this is what i was talking about the car park aspect so these are all of the bits that have been dug out and repaved and, and stuff but they've also made an effort in some places to actually put some paving and whatever down uh so yeah this is the this is the outside the town around it obviously we did in the last episode this is the main uh, the main road then. So you've got Bergs on the right hand side. You know the story of Bergs. It's the place that I always put in. And then we've just got ourselves a gift shop um, that would sell all sorts of like seaside based tat. Um, whoops. I thought I pressed T then. I didn't. Um, there we go. So just loads of like seaside based tat that's all in here. Nice and simple. This is just, again a unit that somebody would have rented out. Uh, and then over this way, we have another arcade that I kitted out, but this is just a room of games. There is no care or attention with this one at all, and that's by design. And it's called the Games Room. It's a room of games. So. So. <laughs> and then we come down this way into uh, Indoor Soft Play, which is the Fun Factory. This is kitted out as a proper full-on fun factory thing uh so yes it's it's awesome like i like how this turned out lovely colorful really simple design this is the fairground then that we did for the car park so this is just designed to be somewhere that's not really necessarily competing for business but just trying to cash in on the fact that fundy fun spot is is ridiculously busy so you've got like rides here and again these would be swapped around and the car park would be a car park in the winter and this in the summer so that's kind of what we're what we're going for here but this is the next big thing so i'm going to cut to something that i filmed before doing this tour right okay so guys this is a big reveal this is something that's been in the making for quite some time and behind a screen so this is in game and this is a screen behind the screen is something that somebody else has been working on and i've not seen it yet and i need to do this in one go because if i do multiple takes of this i would have seen what's coming on and my reaction won't be genuine so i'm so excited for this so let me just give you some backstory uh, as part of the fundy fun spot blueprint submission stuff you guys were sending your uh, stuff in and you did an awesome amazing job as you already know from the last episode uh, i also reached out to some other creators just to put their stuff together so big shout out to moving little socks who sent through uh, some stuff that i could use and this one is coaster monkey studios now this was done when i decided i wasn't going to do the interior of uh, sunburn games this is what's come through so i saw some real early teasers and i've seen nothing since this is the big reveal and this is you and i are seeing this for the first time right so here we go Oh my god. Oh, look. It looks awesome. I mean, obviously, I'm going to put this into Fundy Fun Spot and we're going to see it in situ. So, um. Oh, I'm literally blown away. This is so good. Look at it. Just look at it. Right, okay. I need to stop gawping because this is not good content. <laughs> so, <laughs> I asked, uh,. I asked Coaster Monkey Studios then to do all of this uh, and because there's a Blueprint series and if you've not seen the Blueprint series then you absolutely need to go and see it. Not yet. You need to see the end of this video first. So stay where you are. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I wanted uh, to ask Coaster Monkey to do, to do this, uh, the arcade inside. And so from what I gather from uh, some narrative and everything that I've been given about this is that there's two sections. There's a modern section and a 70s section. Uh, there's a couple of restaurants and stuff inside. And also uh, Coaster Monkey has also done the strip mall. Uh, the other side as well and the staff car park so let's have a look i don't know where to start like all right, right let's start this side um this is the future one i believe um he's also by the way asked me to give some shout outs so i just need to get those uh ready and uh willing so 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 oh just look at this guys this is oh, just look I don't like. I don't even know where to begin to to like talk you through because I've not seen this. So you, you and I are seeing this for the first time. This is awesome. This is just so high budget. This is far too high budget for a British seaside place. But look at the quality of this work. I mean, like, look at the ceiling. It's just 
Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Love this ticket, this ticket area. This is so good. And then the dance mat. I would never in a million years have thought to do anything like this. I've, I've got so many questions and so many things. I'm like, how have you done that? This dance mat is amazing. Of course, we've seen the uh, we, we've seen all of the games and stuff before. I'm using that myself. It's a rotating earth. Look at this. And all of the, the lights and stuff. Uh, oh. I don't know if there's supposed to be a video playing here. It didn't tell me that there was a failure to load stuff. And you can hear that there's audio. So everything that I've been given has loaded. Um, oh, look at these. I wanted these in the actual, in the other arcade. The, oh, look at it. I just, how is that even done? Is it like, oh, God. Right, okay. Um, the Pac-Man stuff on the... Oh, you have surpassed yourself. This is incredible. This is far superior to anything I could have created. This is just amazing. Um, right, okay. So this is the modern. This is the modern one. So we've now got to go across to. So I think I don't know if this is done. I think this is left. Oh, he's even done the backstage. Come on. So this is the warehouse. This is. Oh, I love it. Right. Okay, I need to step up my game because this is just insane. Insane. Right, okay, so now we're going into the older part. So that fir that first part is the extension. This is the original part of the arcade. So it's another another arcade that's been put together. Um, what is this? Oh, it's a restaurant. Oh, that's nice. Oh my god. Wait, hang on. Is that... What's what's this glass? That's got to be TMTK, right? That can't be in-game. This is just... It just feels like an arcade. It feels like there's people in it. It feels... Oh. This is very uh, reminiscent as well. Not reminiscent. This is very suited to Frankie and Ben is. This is the style that Frankie and Ben is. This is the whole exposed brick, the booths and everything. But this is just brilliant. Uh, and he's also gone one step further. He's done the kitchen, which is something I never do. Bravo, sir. Bravo. Okay. Just look at it. it just, it's, it's a kitchen. Like, there's no doubt about it. Is that... Wait. Did I just see a rat? There's a rat. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, just... <sighs> this is just mind-blowing. Like, a lot... And this wall on the back, just... I'm stealing some of these ideas for my next park, because these are just... Oh, this is just brilliant. And we've just got some more games... Um, we've got ski ball. We've got vending machine. Okay, okay. And pinball. Right, so there's some shout outs um, that he's asked me to do. So I need to shout out uh, It's Darren for the DDR machine. I don't know what that means, but there's a DDR machine and it's done by It's Darren. Uh, Gal Galatian? Glacian for the race machines, um, totally stealing those, that's for sure. Uh, and MioArt for uh, overall build support. So that's the that, that's the shout outs that Coaster Monkey has asked me to give. So guys, if you do happen to watch this, thank, thank you because this is, it, well, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, this is the strip mall then, so this is a bit more modern. And it, this actually fits into what we would expect to see in... Um, uh, in the UK, maybe not the shop names, but hey, this is an American take on a British British part of the park, so I'm going to run with it. Uh, so I don't think we've got interiors. I think uh, it was sacrificed for peace count. Yeah, it was sacrificed for peace count. Absolutely fine. No issue with that whatsoever. Um, I'm just going to change this to daytime so we can see. Uh, there we go. A bit more, a bit better. And I'm actually going to keep the, the UI open as well. So we can see this is such a simple exterior, but so beautiful and elegant. Like, 
just look at it. It's just perfect. Same, I don't know if they're supposed to be billboards here that have been loaded. Again, nothing failed, but hey, loving this glass pillar. That's really unique. Like, I wonder, was that inspired, do you think? Wow, okay. Right, so a couple of questions. Let's go and see what some stuff is uh, because I'm really, really intrigued. Uh, right, so this stainless steel uh, stuff, I imagine. Stainless steel glass with Planco logo. What do we reckon? Is it going to be building? Right, it's not in there. So... Uh, that one, yeah, so it's workshop. Okay. I'm so glad I got that now. <laughs> totally using that. Uh, okay, so, 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 so. The other one I wanted to see was the Forza, uh, Forza Horizon 4. Oh, this is an actual blueprint. Look at this. Right, okay combination of things that I just couldn't even put together do you know there are some talented people out there that can do this sort of stuff I envy them like I'm yes I'm great at building parks and making them look real and using my real life experience to do all sorts of stuff but there's people like this that can just create the most amazing artistic things uh, oh Coaster Monkey did you do your toilets come on no you didn't okay <laughs> you're forgiven you are forgiven uh, wow. Okay, right. So this is this is this is going on a little bit. Let's uh, let's cut straight back to Fundy Fun Spot so we can see this in situ. Oh my God! I mean, what an incredible piece of work. I just wow. So I've put this down in, into Fundy. Uh, there are there are some billboards that I haven't loaded, and Coastal Monkey Studios. I'm sorry, they still aren't loading. Um, I wanted to to be able to show you around and sort of show you what the billboards are like, but they just. I'm sorry they didn't load, so I can't. Um, but this is best viewed at night. You're right. 1 a.m. is the sweet spot of this entire build. Just amazing. And actually, I want to stay up in 1 a.m. Uh, so that I can show you the inside of the dome. And also the outside of all the stuff that we've put in here. So, starting with... I'm back in Tejikan, by the way. Had you, had you noticed? Uh, <laughs> starting with... Our fairground across the road, uh, Ring of Fire suddenly makes sense. It's got loads of like lights and stuff going on in here. Uh, so yeah, this is, I love this. It just looks so good. Uh, and then all of the other stuff that's lit up. So Sandy's has got the awesome sign. Uh, Shaky Shane's is all lit up on the inside. Um, Brutiful Coffee, I think would be closed at this time of night. So it is lit inside, but it's fine. It would be, it would be closed. Uh, <laughs> and then we're going to come into Pontoon. And this is what Pontoon looks like at night. So this is where all of the disco and everything everything kicks in. So I don't know which way around to go around the dome. Uh, because where, where do you even start? Right, we're going to go this way. Let's walk over everything. Yeah, Renegade. So this is uh, this is the, the first part of the dome then. So the dome is very much best viewed at night. So... Uh, oh, how do we even start to talk about the dome? Because we've done it loads. So it's all supposed to be a dark ride. It uses a lot of the dark ride principles. It uses a lot of very ambient lighting in here to create these awesome little colour palettes and these little colourways. From the top, it looks much more intense than it does when you're actually at peak level like we are now. Uh, but it's all lit up so warmly and so beautifully. So we're going to go up into uh, the pirate area first, I think, and then come around and do this coaster last. So this is the info booth that we've got. Just love how all of the light reflects off of all of the lettering to make it look like it's lit up and, and like with the neon up here and stuff. Just looks really, really good. Love it. Um, I'm going to walk through the fountain. <laughs> and we're going to walk this way because we don't really often go this way because um, it's the, the least of the inspiring bits. But this is the pirate area then. So remember, the inside of Fundy, Fo Fundy Fun Spot, by the way, would be where all the money is spent like all, ever since it opened. Everything was going to be very high detail, high theme inside, and everything else on the outside are supporting attractions for the inside. So we've got this piratey type area with a roller coaster. You've got uh, the theme being the volcano in the middle. So the volcano acts as a centering point for all of the themes, three themes within the dome. So we've got the pirate theme, we've got a Caribbean carnival theme, and we've also got a Mexican Mediterranean style theme going on. All of which 
the volcano forms the center the center point of uh, so within the pirate area then we've just got loads there's the the high street we've got loads and loads of shops and stuff up here so we've got loads of food stalls and whatever we've got a coaster on here i think this is called bounty chase i think we called it yeah bounty chase down to chase so that's a bobsled coaster that we're going to go on in a moment uh, we have a gift shop called me arties me uh, again it's kitted out as you'd expect a gift shop to be in here so lots of um space used up with all sorts of things on sale clothes and whatever but using very low ambient light rather than really bright garish light because it's supposed to fit in uh, fit in with the theme and then Again, stuff sitting on barrels because that's the theme of the thing. And then you've just got all of the stuff on the shelves and the pay here over that side. And we're going to come this way. We have the galley. And this is where you're going to buy some more grab and go kind of food. Uh, I mean, then we've got on the left hand side, we've got some toilets. Now, what camera am I? That one. There we go. Uh, so the toilets again, all, oh, hello, all kitted out as you would expect. Um, with stuff you know like vending machines and the hand units and posters and stuff and i don't know if i can ever if i've ever been able to show the outside of this properly because of the positioning but this is yeah look <laughs> it's awesome uh just that the outside of the building just looks really really good so men and women on the on the other side you know on the opposite sides of each other and then we come over to the mary celeste via the wellerman wheel so there's the Wellerman wheel there, which is just a whirly rig. It's just, you know, standard whirly rig. Uh, but the Mary Celeste, that's actually a... Um, what's going on with my camera? There we go. But the Mary Celeste is actually a dark ride. So I don't think I'm going to put a POV in this tour because it's just going to make the video too long. Um, there's a POV available on episode two, I think it is. Hasn't changed. It's all the same. Uh, but yeah, it's just this ghost coast just wanted this idea of having something a bit foreboding uh, and a bit sort of like castly sitting in the area of the village so that's kind of nice and then I've just used all of like a load of custom paving in here this this cobblestone and everything just really makes the area come to life and then it's hidden by concrete which is colored yellow to make it look like sand um, which then gives all of this area a bit of sense and I'm going to go down this area after we ride this coaster so Let's go and go back to Bounty Chase. The queue for this then, nice and simple. Uh, it's this wooden wooden railing effect. Just, again, it's beams. Lots of beams. Nice and simple. Nice and short queue. Does it, say, it does actually the same cattle pen as the Morrison Skyloopy thing that we did earlier on. So it's sort of like very similar station setup. Um, and then inside here, all kitted out and all themed. So trains here. Let's go for a ride. Yeah, I mean, it's all right as far as bobsled coasters go. It does does what it needs to do. Uh, so we're going to come round this way. I've come out of Tejikam for this bit because I have done a take on this already and Tejikam just really messed up and crashed the game. So I'm not going to even try doing that again. Uh, so we're going to come back past Galley uh, and we're going to come back past uh, Ghost Coast 
and you can you can hear the the sound clipping so it's really struggling like this part of the game is really really struggling uh, so we come into the golf course so the golf course was set up just to fill some space i wanted it to be on multiple levels so that um i was utilizing as much of this upper space as possible and i wanted to bring the pirate theme down into the caribbean theme so that's what i did the golf the golf course did exactly that then underneath we just have a game stall in here uh, that just sort of fills the space that's underneath you couldn't put a ride underneath it you didn't you wouldn't really want to put food units and everything underneath it because of the smell so it just makes sense for it to be a games a games place but nothing too heavy because you've got the arcade right so this is just to just to fill a bit of a void, uh, and then coming this way, we continue the pirate theme into the pirates, uh, into the Ahoy 4D uh, area, and so this is using a lot of mood lighting. It's using a lot of orange and blues and green lighting in here just to set the scene, and lots of multimedia going on. So you've got like this video that's on the wall here to make you try and believe that you're supposed to be on a <laughs> on a beach, and then you've got the stuff that's over this way. It's completely unrelated. I mean, you get greeted by this guy. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine being in this queue and just seeing this guy here going, hello. <laughs> Frightening. And then you come into this area here and uh, there's just lots of like reminders that you're supposed to be amongst sea life and all of that sort of stuff. So lots of... Uh, things if by the way if you're playing planet zoo and you want to do an aquarium these videos came from vid easy um you can sign up and you can purchase these videos and they look amazing so maybe not this one because it pans but this one yeah maybe uh you loads of stuff that you can do in there anyway inside here is our 4d cinema amazing right guys i just need to pause the game for a second because i need to come down here and I need to grab this guy. I need to come back here, but not too far. There we go. Because it's time to show you what happens in here. Uh, so you would have already seen what happens in here, right? Uh, but if you haven't, this is a 4D cinema. So I press play on this and everything kicks in. There's loads of effects. There's loads of lights. It's all synced up to stuff. Um, and it's like this immersive experience, just in case you weren't aware. The left screen and the right screen wouldn't be play would not be playing the same video as the one in front. Um, they would be playing the left and the right view, but those videos don't exist. So this is the best that I could do in this in this instance. But you can see there's smoke coming down. I don't know if it's been picked up on YouTube, but there's smoke coming down. You've also got lights and lasers and stuff that's that's going on. You can hear the bubbles. So lots of things. Uh, I'm not going to stay for the full thing because it's a minute. So uh, I'm just going to come back this way <laughs> go through the wall and then we're in the caribbean area i love this area it's so warm and so lovely uh it's themed and based really around pigeon forge it, just by dollywood and it's that whole really warm caribbean feeling so the caribbeans caribbeans the caribbeans i don't even know what i'm trying to say that that area of the of the world just has the most amazing architecture it's just beautiful and colorful dutch colonial so i wanted to really bring that into fundy fun spot because it's just so warm and so lovely and that's what i've done here so it's all with the neon lights on top of the buildings and the bright colors that you've got for the the actual paintwork and then you've just got all of the supporting light that goes with it just makes this area really really warm um, but really vibrant and really colorful so it's got like a bit of a carnival feel to it but the whole purpose of, uh, of that is the center of this. So in the center, we've got a rising raptor. So of course, the, the volcano is the central piece of all of the theming, but the rising raptor is the highest point of the dome. So you can't get anything else in the middle. So the rising raptor fitted in just perfectly. This was a complete accident as well that it actually fitted in. Um, but it just creates this awesome dominating sightline and it's just a brilliant ride to have it's almost like the headline attraction in here and then we come down to our final area of fundy fun spot and that's our mediterranean inspired area so uh this is all very much that warm mediterranean or mexican sandstone style building all themed around the temples and everything we've got a roller coaster that's just a kiddie coaster in the middle and it goes up the lift hill comes around a bend through a, uh, a snake pit i was going to say then a crocodile pit which is blue colored blue so it's supposed to look like water and it goes around again so really really simple layout really simple design um we're going to go on that in a moment 
but then we come around to this way and again we've still just got all of this sandstone going on um and just these like orange warm bright lights but then i've also dappled it out with some more blues and greens and purples as well just to give it a little bit of atmosphere and ambience um hello <laughs> i got excited <laughs> so uh yeah then you've also got the dune drift which is just underneath here and i wanted this idea of having a bit of an undulating skyline and so the dune drift actually fitted perfectly because i could st i could make the ride go through it so I just sort of wanted that wanted that effect. Then we've got a carousel over the other side with a, a city fascia. And then we've got poltergeist. So that's where we're back here. And then we come around. There's uh, the front of pontoon in front of you here. The info booth that we started at is here. And this is Temple Raider. So Temple Raider is really cheaply put together. It's not supposed to be any th any frills to it. But, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. So... Let's take a ride, I reckon. And so, just like that, after nine episodes, that is Fundy Fun Spot. Not going to tour the city, I'm not going to tour the rest because we've done that in the previous episode. It's too new and too fresh to do that, but this is Fundy Fun Spot at night. And guys, this has been such a pleasure to put together. Like, I have loved doing this this build. It's just been so great to have creative freedom. This is the park that breaks all of the conventional rules. It doesn't have maintenance areas and sheds, and it doesn't have all of that sort of stuff. So, like, it's just, it's it's a lovely park to build. And I love how the inside has turned out and how the, the lighting has turned out in there. So, and I think you guys have as well. You've been so warm. The one thing I've taken away from this series is people have got a lot of love for Fantasy Island. It might be low budget. It might be well well looked after but it is really really well loved so guys thank you so much for coming along to this journey thank you for making the 500 subscribers that made this episode possible and the thousand that came off the back of it like that's unreal it's just i can't believe it so next park project what do you reckon it's going to be uh, i'm going to leave a couple of comments down below as a few options that i'm thinking of let me know what you think but guys until we speak again you know what to do thank you so much for coming along I'll speak to you shortly. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye.